Have you ever read this and read the last three words and had them be meaningful to you? I have read these words and these last three words for years. What you've just seen this morning is an expression of those three words. Mm. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. We have heard this morning for the first 50 minutes, give or take, of what Jesus has done, what he is doing. All right? And full of, full of transforming uh, miracles and situations. And now we're going to teach. All right? And I don't know how much of this we'll get to today, but that's neither here nor there. We'll adapt. Sometime you'll get it. So it's healing and health is a topic, lesson one one. It's the establishing the foundation for healing and health. You say healing and health. Is there a difference? I think we we will see that there is a difference uh, on the same category, same realm, maybe just a little difference. But there's two standalone uh, statements that will define our choices throughout this study. Two of them. Might not be the ones you're thinking of. Healing and health from God of all grace, favor and blessings, who cannot lie. Titus 1-2. Let's take a look at it. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot what? He cannot lie. He can not lie. He only speaks the truth. All right? Now, so that brings us right to the crux of the matter is, if God only speaks the truth and what he says is what he means. You say, but I haven't always seen it so. You and I haven't either, have we? Huh? But I believe it so. And I am moving down the road toward that goal and toward that end. In hope of eternal life, in anticipation with pleasure and confidence of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Kelly has already quoted this this morning. See, she was getting right off at the beginning. Acts 10.10, 10, the end of it saying this. I am come that they might have life, life as God has it, and have life more abundantly or beyond measure. So now we have these con this beginning of this contrast that we're going to see. So words from God is words from one that cannot lie. All right? Two, sickness and disease from Satan, your enemy, the thief who is and was a murderer from the beginning and the father of all lies. Major contrast. Wow. Let's do this. Uh, John 8, 42. Uh, we have a couple verses here, I believe. Jesus said unto them, he's talking to Pharisees and scribes, or the lawyers of the day, and this is what he's saying, because they said they were Abraham's children. If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and come from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word, you are of your father who? Hmm. Isn't that something? The devil, the lust of your father ye will do. Here he goes. Here's his character. 
He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. You got the point? We have two contrasts, neither one. They're separate. Their whole motives is altogether different. Let me do this with you. Wow. Uh, he bowed not in the truth. The devil's fixed position is opposition to truth. Because there's no truth in him, he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. Now let's go back to the first part of John 10.10. 10. The thief, Satan, cometh not. He has a three-pronged purpose in this verse. That is to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. Well, I might as well take you back. I kept reading that. And he, I said, kill, that should be the last event. You shake your head no. Your hope, or your hope, everything. Yeah. Everything robs you of, matter of fact, what it does is separates you from God for eternity. All right? When he talks about death, he's talking about separation from God for eternity. Yes, there is a physical death, but for every Christian, that is merely a change of scene. Okay? Let's, let me do this then. So Mary has got us straight, because that's the same thing the Spirit said to me one day, <laughs> that I was wrong. Well, he didn't say it that definite. but The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Only motive. Now, wow. It has, it has set a guard on what I say. Because if I was to say a lie, who's the father of that? Huh? Yeah. Hello? It should clean up some messes in our life if we have trouble that way. You will also face different situations because you can't. You know, it makes no difference what you're into. You can't lie. That's where you come out at. All right. Wow. Jesus and Satan has fixed unchangeable natures and goals. They are who they are. And will forever be what they are. They will never mix nor exchange motives or deeds. All right? Healing and health defined. Healing from Vine's Dictionary. There's multiple uh, words, and you'll see them listed in that verse for you that has notes. But I'm going to deal with this in this fashion. The quality and act of being cured and or healed. To care for the sick, to cure, to treat, heal. Being made whole, healing and wholeness, both spiritual and physical. Also, sozo, which is to save, to heal, to make whole, saving from disease and its effects, to deliver and protect, preserve, to save, be safe, do well, be whole. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Health is to be healthy, to be sound of health. Well in body, safe and sound, a sound whole. That's cool. Now, 3 John 1, 2. Here is Jesus' desire. Now we found out he only speaks the truth. Is that right? So here, John record. Beloved, I wish above all things. How many things? All things that thou mayest prosper and be in what? Health as thy soul prospers. Well, that's a theological term that theologians don't agree on. Uh, after years of looking at this, I have come down peacefully with this definition. Soul is psyche, the Greek word. Mind, intellect, will, emotions. All right? 
What do you do with them? They're renewed by the word of God, according to Romans 12, 2. Your body is to be a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1. That's something you do once you're a part of the kingdom of God. You take those areas and you deal with them. And you'll be dealing with this one probably the rest of your life. All right? Uh, how long have you been at this, John? A long time. Uh, Ruth and I, I think we're in our 50-some years. And uh, I still have to deal with my thinking. You have to deal with yours. But we need to bring it into conformity to the Word of God. Simple as that. When he starts throwing something at you that's pure garbage, or you know it to be a lie, you flee away to what is truth. And you make that the priority of your life. All right? Not those flaky, spacey things that he terms as lust. Lust, when it conceives, brings forth sin. There has to be a conception there. But it will, and that's what it does. All right. Now, let's take a look at this. So, to, to be whole and have health on the outside of you, means we have wholeness and health on the inside. Or we're in the means of getting there. And we're still on the way. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 says this, And the very God of peace, peace, well, let me define this peace because it's quietness and rest, sanctify you, separate and set you apart, wholly or completely, in all respects. And I pray, God, you're whole, complete in ever part, perfectly sound in body, the entire whole, spirit, soul, and body be preserved, implying a fortress of full military lines to guard you as blameless, no cause for censure. You mean I can stand before God today with no cause for censure? He cannot censure. He will not censure me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Does that mean you're perfect? I didn't say that. Did I? No cause for censure. When you pray, that voice that says you're not qualified for this, you remember yesterday or the day before, you pay no attention to it. Okay? I'm blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24 saying this, Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. Who's doing it? Our Lord is doing it. You think you've got to shape yourself up. Well, you need to surrender. It's all be transformed by the renewing of your mind, as you may prove with that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Wow. One of the greatest truths of the New Testament is that Christ indwells the believer. God's supernatural power is therefore available to bring his will to pass in and through individuals. Could either one of those two make that transformation? Couldn't, they couldn't do it. Not in themselves. Recognize you can't do it. But he, through you, can well able to do it. Wow. Hmm. The victorious Christian has learned to let Christ live through them. Well, would you like to see that in black and white? Galatians 2.20. Bill, could you look it up for us, please? I am, or I have been crucified with Christ. When he was nailed, the effects for your sin was nailed with him. Your old man was nailed with him. Take a look at it in uh, Romans uh, 6, about verse 4, perhaps. And then Colossians 2, you'll find it mentioned there. Uh, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Who lives in you? 
Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh. I live by what? The faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. So who lives in you? Christ lives in you. Absolutely. Failure to let Christ have control is that all at the root of all believers' frustrations. Hmm? Yeah. Amen. That's absolutely true. I have two questions at this point for you today. First one is healing from the outside in. Healing from the outside in. Second question would be, is health from the inside out? I'm going to give you an observation. When sick, infirm, or emotionally distraught, you could or would call the spiritual family. And they act on biblical instructions by laying hands on you, anoint you with oil, praying one for another. Special gifts of the Spirit could be manifest. Also, you may seek a doctor and medical attention. This action is applied from the outside in. But we give praise for all, those, all the love and the abilities involved to transform you from the outside in. All right? is health from the inside out. As believers, you're walking in health, and then the thief sneaks through. A weakness, sickness, infirmity, emotional stress, and attacks. When this happens, you do not surrender. Hmm. You resist. You stand fixed on the word of God, as led by the Spirit, speaking to the condition and to the thief who issued it. Your inner man, your, your spirit man, communicates with power and authority, with jurisdiction to confront and disperse the attack. Help from the inside out. All right. Now, at this point, I am going to make a statement that I, I have admit I have thought about multiple times. And I also thought about Lori sitting there when I make it. Are you ready? Healing is the will of God for everyone, every time, all the time. Lynn, just a minute. <laughs> just a minute. I have already confessed that I am not perfection personified, all right? But I believe it because I'm, we're going to find the Word of God leads you to these conclusions. Lynn, what happened to you last winter? I went to emergency. And when the doctor says, tomorrow, we'll take that out. And I said, I oh, know you won't. Uh-uh. Yesterday, in an hour, he was taking it out. <laughs> All right? And that's the goal. But I got three scars on my person. I will tell you this, just because he's the kind of guy with my sense of humor. When I went back to see him, he pulled a chair up in front of me and sat on it, and he says, it was rotten. I mean, that's all. No greeting, no nothing. It was rotten. It was really rotten. It's gone. Don't you feel bad? No, I felt good. Lynn, you just, I know. I'm giving you what the, the book tells us. And when the book tells us, I'm in agreement with it. I can't give you anything else but what the Word says. I can't do that. My life is not the testimony of Jesus Christ. What He says is what is. How I live it I'm living it better than I used to. Okay? The dramatic things that happen is better than what it was in years gone by. 
So I want you to put the priority on what the Word of God says. All right? Now, the things that happened last week, this week, they're happening. They're supernatural events. I believe in those. Now, hang on, because now we're going to look at Luke. Will you guys get me to 1130? Smile. Will you? Thank you. I don't know if we'll get done then, but we'll get close. <laughs> Thank you. Luke 5, 12 through 13. And it came to pass, he was in a certain city, and behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and bethought him, saying, Lord, if you will, thou can make me clean. And he had put forth his hand, touched him, and saying, Jesus did, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Amen. Lord, what he's saying is, Master, if you will, if you determine, if you choose, if you be so inclined, if it pleases you, and you desire. Have you ever come to him like that? <laughs> yeah. Already knowing, you know, that you weren't perfect. If anybody knows you're not perfect, it's you. Hello. <laughs> That's just an add-in. All right. Thou canst, you're able, you have the power by virtue of your ability, resources, and by your decision to make me clean, to clean by curing. Jesus touched him saying, I will. God's choice is absolute and deliberate. He consented, he conceived, he decided he, he, would, he takes pleasure in this. Be thou clean, and he was cleansed by curing him. Immediately the leprosy departed from him. He was physically and ceremonially clean and pure. Why do you put ceremony in there? Because Jesus was functioning under the old covenant, the law. Lepers could not have contact with people. They were confined to quarters. This one got out and joined the crowd. So Jesus said, be clean, but then go show yourself to the priests so that they're ceremonial clean. Now, Dale this Thursday, because we got talking about this, and he really worked the top of this one over for me, in as much as he was questioned how I can make the statement. It really takes no faith to believe that God can heal. But you've got to settle it in your heart whether he, God, is willing to heal you. All right? Yes, he is. He says he is. If he healed that guy, he'll heal you. It's his will. Romans 2.11 puts it this way. There's no respecter of persons, no respect of persons with God. He doesn't love John more than Wug, or Wug more than John. What he'll do for Wug, he'll do for John. What he'll do for John, he'll do for Brian, and on it goes. Yeah. If, that's right, so, um, if your faith, will he heal you if you have no faith? If you have none? What, what was that? Yeah, he can. Okay. What is, Mike, what is happening outside these walls? People are walking down the street, 
walking up to somebody and say, do you hurt somewhere? No other questions. Do you hurt somewhere? They say, yes. Is it here? Where? They tell them. And what happens? They minister to them. God heals them. And they might, at that point, introduce them to Jesus. It's, there's some stunning stories out there. Uh, stunning. Uh, one of the people that uh, Roger and Angela listened to set up a booth at a witch's convention. <laughs> now go there, will you? <laughs> and it was very effective at what happened. And a lady come up and, well, yeah, I will tell you what. A witch stood in front of this guy, and when he got done, she was healed, and she walked. Ran out, left her booth, left, her, left all of the idols and the crystals and the demonic things behind her. They had to get out of here because it's a bad place. Yep. eating my food when I was dying. So my mother took me to the doctor and said, why is she crying? And he said, she's starving. So she took me home. My adopted mate, my, my adopted mother said, well, let's take Sharon until you get on your feet. It never happened. They, when I was three years old, they were adopted. And, okay. and, and good parents were, were perfect. But, at 15, I had an accident, had, had to go to the hospital. But you know what? God was there. I was not saved. You know, we see, well, this will happen when I'm saved. He, me, he took care of me from before I was saved. Mm -hmm. The Lord, Satan tried to steal, steal me. I'm Yes, and I want the people from here to know that it has, it has nothing to do with being saved because he knew I was going to come back. Can I ask you a personal question? I, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you want to think about that for a minute. Yeah. How many of those feelings from those years it still has a, it still bothers you? You know that. Hmm? You know that. They know there is. It's part of my life. Yep. Uh, can, can we pray about that? Sure. Oh, Father, you love us. Oh, you are so We called her your own. You brought her into the family. Daughter of the Most High, who sealed her with the promise of the Holy Spirit, and you've restored her completely to wholeness in Him. She is not abandoned. She is loved and wanted, wanted so much that you would be willing to die if she was the only one. Because of your great love for her, Lord, Father, we thank you that she can feel accepted in the Beloved. Accepted in you, Father. In Jesus' name, we come against the lie of the enemy and we call you what cannot be called to. I command you to cease your lying right now in the name of Jesus. She is whole. She is healthy. She is delivered. And she Amen. is free. So be it. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. So be it. In Jesus' name. Everyone here is like that. Everyone here has that. Acceptance? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you were the only one, he would still. That's hard to He'd do. leave 99 <laughs> to go after the one. Yep, he does that. He, did it. he would leave everyone else to pursue you. He would leave his porch to run to the prodigal. Come. He didn't stay and wait for the prodigal to come to him. He got off the seat and ran to embrace because that's the heart of God. And his love toward you is perfect. Perfect. Amen. Thank you, Linda. 
free. 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 Yeah, free, from, free from that lie. You are not abandoned. You are never alone. A child of God. Well, if you'll allow me to say son of God. <laughs> okay? I was more boy than a girl. <laughs> you was more boy than a girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bill, can we go to Matthew 8, uh, 16 and 17? Uh, there may be some changes coming up. Uh, here we go. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed, cared for the sick, treat, cure, heal, being made whole. All. Healed. How many? All. Any, every, the whole, all manner of, always, anyone that was sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken from Isaiah the prophet. This is a direct quote, so to speak, from Isaiah 54, uh, saying, himself took, he took to himself our infirmities. He bore that, he bore that, he bore that. He took it to himself. And bear, lifted, and received to himself our sicknesses. He picked them up, so to speak. They were placed on him. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, so says Hebrews 13.8. So it is God's will to heal every time when he walked the earth. Then it must be his will today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Seventeen times in the Gospels, he healed all. Forty-seven times, he healed one or two people. Nowhere do we find Jesus refusing to heal anyone. In light of Jesus' statement that he could do nothing of himself but only what he saw the Father do, and his actions are proof enough that it's God's will to heal. Healing is a direct benefit of salvation. You say, oh, Lynn. I say, hang on. Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord. Thank the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Thanks. And forget not all, how many of his benefits? Have you guys ever realized how many times this word is in the book? Forget not all his benefits. One, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. How many of them? All of them. Isn't that something, though? Wow. Wickedness, guilt, punishment that was to follow. Who healeth all, all thy diseases or sicknesses. I didn't say that. That's been written there. Well, I'm going to guess. Don't quote me at this, okay? I'm going to guess at least 500 years before Christ was born. Hmm? Wow. Wow, that's neat. Now, your adversary, you have an adversary. Jesus defeated your adversary. Death and the grave and hell could not stop Jesus' resurrection to glorious, victorious life of living on the throne next to his Father God. <laughs> it is now your responsibility to enforce the defeat. The devil is defeated, but he is not dead, nor is he confined to his final destination in the lake of fire and brimstone. The devil can only rob, kill, and devour those who do not know the truth intimately and or do not exercise authority over him. All right? 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, or be self-controlled and alert, because whose adversary? Your adversary, your opponent, who is the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour, to swallow you, to destroy you, to annihilate you. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, 
Steadfast is a fixed spiritual resistance in a fixed spiritual position as one seated with Jesus, the original victor. My, a recommendation I leave with you this morning is you don't allow your blessing to be stolen. The Pharisee in the last day and time had no problem with Jesus' ability to heal. I won't talk about the Sadducees. That's a different group of people. It was, it was his ability to forgive sins that they had a huge problem with. In Luke 5, 21 through 24, the paralyzed man lowered through the roof by friends. Jesus saw their faith. Okay, in this case, the people that lowered this guy through the roof. Jesus saw their faith. And said, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. The scribes and the Pharisees went and began to reason, saying, who is this that speaketh blasphemies, who can uh, forgive sins, but who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, Why reason you in your heart whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven you, or rise, take up your bed and walk? Which is easier? Which is harder? Hmm? Which is easier? If you say your sins are forgiven, you can't see them. Now, if somebody's laying flat on a cot, and they say, Get, Take up your cot and walk. What's well, does that make a difference? And Jesus did that. Oh my. Well, but you may know that the Son of God hath power upon earth to forgive sins, said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, Arise, take up your couch, and go to the house. Which is easier? Be forgiven? rise and be healed. What do you and I believe about Jesus? Isaiah 53, 4, where the reference come from, here's what it says. He has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, that we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. His griefs and infirmities, Matthew quotes it, and carried our sorrows or our sicknesses. I got six minutes to get this last piece out. It is a piece I've been waiting for since we started this. Here it goes. Oh, there's communion. I didn't tell you that. I forgot. Forgive me. Okay. Luke 9, 1, 2, and later 6. He called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. We are his disciples also, are we not? If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. All right. He gave them power and authority over what? How many? All. Oh. And to cure diseases, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Wow. And verse 6. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing what? Everywhere. Now, what does the Bible tell us? Uh, Aunt Patty sent me a thing from a Charisma magazine. I just took one sentence right out of it. Uh, the church has the authority. Either authority, jurisdiction. I'll go to define these words better in just a moment. But does she know she possesses the authority? Does she? Or is she refusing to use it? Mm. One and the same, actually, when it comes to results. So let's take a look. Power, first word, uh, back in Luke 9, 1 and 2. Uh, he gave them power and authority, right there together. I'm going to define those words. Power is dunamis, miraculous power, uh, a power beyond our power, force or might, power that works miracles. B is the second word, authority. It's privilege, authority, capacity, competency, control, and jurisdiction. Rule? There's some, there's some more notes on the back there with no names on them. Just snatch them if you want them. Uh, control and jurisdiction, rule and dominion over all devils and to cure diseases. Jesus said this to his disciples, including you and me. He that just informed us he gave us a, 
dunamis power, miraculous power over devils to heal the sick. He also gave us authority, which is jurisdiction, rule, dominion, and power over all devils and to cure diseases. Same setting in Matthew's words. We have these, we have now the second witness in Matthew 10.1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now, interesting enough, this power in this setting is, is the second one, the authority. Uh, unclean spirits to cast them out and to do what? Heal what? All manner of disease, sickness, and all manner of disease. Any question there? Two minutes of spirit is checking me. <laughs> but I forgot about communion. Wow. Whew. Powerful words, are they not? He downloads power and authority. Huh? Stores it in you and I. Amen. Uh, pick up some notes. I will tell you this. I made a mistake, or the machine did. Probably me. I've got a bunch of copies extra that I didn't know I was going to have. So there